Today I want to talk about some common decluttering mistakes that we can try and avoid when going through the decluttering process because although decluttering can definitely be super transformative and I've experienced that personally, it can be life-changing in so many ways. We definitely want to approach it in a more mindful way because it's already a time-consuming and somewhat draining process to go through. And so if you can avoid some of these mistakes, it's going to save you a lot of time and energy. Let's get started. Mistake number one is not having a plan. Now, this can definitely lead you to feeling overwhelmed by the whole decluttering process very quickly. It's very easy to get that like boost in motivation, that spike in like, oh my gosh, I want to declutter right now. I'm so inspired by something I watched or listened to, or I feel so motivated. And then not having that plan can quickly like leave you directionless and not knowing where to start, what to do, where to begin. And then you just kind of feel defeated before you've even started. So think about it before you start. Think about how you want to approach it. Do you want to do like one room at a time? Do you want to go kind of like Marie Kondo style and declutter by category. Think about that first before you dive into it and it'll make the process a lot smoother and it'll give you some sort of direction so you're not feeling lost and overwhelmed. Mistake number two is being too sentimental. I know this can be easier said than done, but it's a very tricky thing when you get into decluttering because sentimentality, I think that's the word, it's a natural thing. But if we hold on and have such strong attachment to every single thing, the clutter is just never going to go away. So instead, what I try and do is I try and approach it in a way that if everything is special and sentimental, then really nothing is. So going through the process of decluttering, the things that you really truly love and really have a lot of value to you and bring you that joy, they'll stand out to you and then kind of measure everything else against that sort of benchmark. And it'll help you to just focus on the truly sentimental things and help you to declutter the rest without such a strong attachment. And if it helps for the time being, take pictures of some items that maybe you're not fully ready to let go of. Although I'm, I'm sure down the road, you'll realize that you never really look back at those pictures. Mistake number three, this was a big one for me personally, is to just ignore all of your digital clutter. Don't make this mistake. It's so easy to overlook because our digital clutter doesn't hold the same space that our physical clutter does. And so we think, well, if I go through my emails and declutter, I'm not going to feel accomplished because everything else around me in my home is still going to look the way it looks. And while that is true, you don't realize sometimes the amount of mental like overwhelm from our digital clutter. And so while it's not physically taking up the same amount of space, if you continue to ignore it, ignore those emails piling up, ignore all those photos, on your phone that you haven't gotten around to cleaning up and decluttering, it can become just as overwhelming as all of the physical clutter. So I know it can be hard initially when you wanna see like results physically in your home, but set aside even a little bit of time every day, maybe just to go through and unsubscribe from emails that you don't want anymore, or go through your phone, get rid of duplicate photos or things like on your phone that you don't want anymore, apps you're not using, things like that. Even if it's a little bit at a time, make a point and schedule it in as part of your decluttering plan or routine to go through your digital clutter. Mistake number four is trying to declutter everything in one go. While it can be tempting for some people, including myself, when you have that personality of like, I just want results now, decluttering, you have to remember, is more of a marathon than a sprint. We didn't accumulate all of this clutter overnight and we're not gonna be able to physically get rid of it all overnight either. Trying to go at it all in one shot Trying to declutter your whole house all at once can quickly lead to burnout and immense frustration, speaking from personal experience. Instead, go back to that plan that you created for your decluttering process and break it down into like more manageable chunks. So if you decided to go through your house room by room, decide, am I gonna do one room a day or is that too much? Should I try and focus on one room a week and tackle little areas within that room every day? Or similarly, if you're going by category, decide if you're gonna do one category a day or some categories that might take more time, give them like a week, things like that. Just give yourself some grace. It's not gonna happen overnight and that's okay. But if you have that plan in place, and you don't go at it all at once, you'll avoid that burnout and that frustration. Mistake number five would be not establishing some boundaries. And what I mean by this is when you start decluttering, you need to have boundaries with yourself and with other people. So when it comes to boundaries with yourself, I'm speaking more in terms of like, don't feel obligated or guilty to hang on to gifts that were given or, you know, things that you don't really want to keep in your life or in your home, but you've 
you just kept them because you feel guilty like set up some boundaries and say you know what i don't have to hold on to these items they're not serving me they're not serving my life and my home it's okay to let them go those boundaries will help you to go through the process and be okay with decluttering things that maybe you weren't okay with in the past. And with regards to boundaries with other people, obviously if you're not living alone, if you are, that's great. You have nobody to discuss anything with, but if you're not living alone, you have to communicate with your family, with your spouse, with your kids, whoever you're living with, what you're doing, why you're doing it, and try and communicate those wants why you want your home to be a certain way and your life to be a certain way and why you're simplifying and why you're decluttering set up some boundaries with your family and discuss those things openly because it is something that will impact everybody around you and hopefully in a positive way but you don't want to blindside your family or have people kind of question what's going on without them really understanding so have those conversations and set up those boundaries right from the get-go just know that avoiding some of these mistakes can help you to achieve that more simple, peaceful home and life environment in a maybe more efficient way, a quicker way, a less draining way than if you go through and kind of ignore all of these things and end up falling into all of these mistakes and all of these pitfalls that I myself have found myself in a few times. So I'm sharing this in hopes that you won't make these mistakes and your decluttering journey will be a little bit smoother and more easygoing and a little more enjoyable than frustrating. You have to be patient with yourself because if I've learned anything about decluttering is that it's an ongoing journey. There is no final destination. It gets easier, things get much more manageable, but it's an ongoing thing and so give yourself some time and be patient with the process and avoiding some of these mistakes will help you to do that a little bit better. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got some value from it. If you did, make sure to subscribe for more videos all about minimalism and simple intentional living. Until next time, happy decluttering.